This is part 84 of SQL Server tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss how to handle deadlock errors in an ADO.NET application. This is continuation to part 83, so please watch part 83 before proceeding. At the moment, we've got two stored procedures here. We discussed both of these stored procedures in detail in our previous video session. What we know is if we execute these stored procedures simultaneously, we are guaranteed to get a deadlock error. One of the transactions will be made the deadlock victim while the other transaction completes successfully. The transaction that's made the deadlock victim will display the 1205 error. Now what we want to do is we want to call these stored procedures from an ASP.NET web application and when a deadlock happens we want to handle that from the ASP.NET application. So let's see how to do that. Here I have a new ASP.NET Web Forms application. So far, I have included the connection string with the web.config file. So this connection string is pointing to the sample DB. And within the sample DB database, we have got the tables, table A and table B, and both the stored procedures, SP transaction 1 and SP transaction 2. And to this ASP.NET Web Project, I also have added two web forms, Web Form 1 and Web Form 2. And on the web form at the moment, we don't have anything. What I'm going to do is drag and drop a button control onto the web form. And I'm going to change the text on this button control. I'm going to call this update table A and then table B. And let's flip this web form to the design mode. And when we double click the button, it should generate the click event handler. We're going to write some ADO.NET code. So I'm going to bring in ADO.NET namespaces. So we need system.configuration, system.data, and system.data.sql client. And we have the connection string within the web.config file. So we have to read that. And in our code behind file, I'm going to create a variable within the click event handler and use the configuration manager class and read the connection string. So the name of the connection string within our web.config file is dbcs. So let's use that name right here. And then on that, I'm going to call connection string. So that should read the connection string from web.config file. I'm going to use the using block here. So using, I'm going to create a SQL connection object, con, equals new SQL connection object. And to this, let's pass the connection string that we have read from the web.config file. Now let's go ahead and create a SQL command object. Let's call it CMD equals new SQL command. And using this SQL command object, we want to execute our first stored procedure, SP transaction one. So that's the name of the stored procedure that we want to execute. And we want this command object to use this connection object that we have created. Since the command object is executing a stored procedure, we have to tell that to the command object. So command dot command type equals command type dot stored procedure. And then let's open the connection and we want to execute our command. Since this is an update statement, I'm going to use the execute non-query method of the command object. Okay, since we have included this connection object in this using block, we don't have to explicitly close that. Okay, so that's our web form one. So this is updating table A first and then table B because when we call this SP transaction one stored procedure, it's updating table A first and then table B. Now let's do the same thing on our web form 2.aspx. So let's get to web form 2.aspx and all I'm going to do is copy the HTML that we have here on webform2.aspx and here I'm going to change the text on the button. I'm going to say update table B and then table A. And let's get to the code behind file and we are going to copy the code that we have in webform1.aspx in webform2.aspx.cs. Okay? All right. Now, from Web Form 2, what we want to do is we want to call a different stored procedure, that is SP transaction 2. Now we've got a lot of compilation errors here. That's basically because we need to include those three ADO.NET namespaces as well. So I'm going to copy those three namespaces and paste them right here. All right. So let's save all these changes. 
and let's navigate to webform1.aspx and let's navigate now to webform2.aspx alright so now I'm going to click update table A and then table B and simultaneously I'm going to click the other update button now one of the transactions should complete successfully while the other should fail with an error. Look at that. You know, this transaction completed successfully and the other one has displayed this yellow screen of death because this stored procedure, that is whatever this webform one dot ASPX was executing, that's made the deadlock victim. And we get that deadlock error. Since we have not handled it, you know, by default it's going to display this yellow screen of death. Now let's see how to handle this deadlock error inside our ASP.NET application. So Let's do that first in our webform1.aspx. So we are in the code behind file. Now what I'm going to do is wrap all this code inside a try catch block. So let's include a try block here. Close the try block right there and include a corresponding catch block. And I'm going to catch the SQL exception and let's call the object ex. So now when we are executing this code, if it's all successful, then we want to display a meaningful message to the user. Let's say we want to say transaction successful. And to display the message, what I'm going to do is include a break element here and then a label. So let's drag and drop a label control onto the web form. Let's remove this default text. And within the code behind file, so if this code completes successfully, then I'm going to say label one dot text equals transaction successful and let's also change the color of the label. So label one dot four color equals system dot drawing dot color dot green. Okay? Now, if at all, if there is an exception, if there is a SQL exception, we want to catch that. And, you know, there could be variety of SQL exceptions. Now, we are specifically interested in if it's a deadlock error. So, I'm going to use the exception objects number property to check the number of the SQL exception. Now, remember, when we get a deadlock error, what is the error number? It is 1205. So, I'm going to check the number property. And if it is equal to 1205, what that means? That means we have a deadlock error. In that case, what do we want to do? We want to display a different message in the label. So let's say we want to say um, deadlock transaction failed. Please retry. OK. And let's say we want to change the color to red maybe and if it's not a deadlock error if it's any other SQL exception error then you know we just want to display whatever is the exception message in the label so in that case what I'm going to do is label one dot text equals I'm going to use the exception objects message property and display the error you know the error message and you know this four color property is duplicated so I'm going to actually take that out from if and else block and put it right there and remove this as well. All right, now let's do the same thing on webform2.aspx as well. So first of all, we need a label control. So I'm going to copy this break element and label and paste it on our webform2.aspx as well. Similarly, let's copy the code that we have here. So I'm going to copy the entire try and catch block inside the button one click event handler of a webform2.aspx. So let's paste the code that we have copied right here. And we have to change the name of the stored procedure to SP transaction 2. All right, so let's save all our changes, rebuild the application, and reload both the pages. So I'm going to reload webform1 and webform2. Now let's execute. Um, you know, first stored procedure one and then simultaneously stored procedure two. 
So shortly one of the transactions should be successful and the other one should fail. So this is the one that's successful. This is the one that has failed. And look at that. It displays that meaningful message. Deadlock transaction failed. Please retry. Now once we click the button again, look at that. The transaction will be resubmitted and it should now complete successfully without any error. So transaction successful. Thank you for listening and have a great day.